Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy these videos, please click like, the little bell, and subscribe to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by. You know what we're going to do today? Um, the election has taken its toll on people, and I thought, you know what? Let's channel through the tarot cards Benjamin Franklin. He was born in Boston on January 17th of 1706. He was the 10th son of a soap maker, Josiah Franklin. Benjamin's mother was Abiah Folger, the second wife of Josiah. In all, Josiah would father 17 children. That was probably common back then. Josiah intended for Benjamin to enter into the clergy. However, Josiah could only afford to send his son to school for one year. Uh, Benjamin loved to read and they were in um, the printing business and James, his brother, would compose pamphlets and set and do set type, which was grueling work. And 12 year old Benjamin would sell the products in the streets. When Benjamin was 15, his brother started the New York or the New England Courant, the first newspaper in Boston. Though there were only two papers in the city, um, James, before James Courant, they only reprinted printed news from abroad. So Benjamin wanted to write to the write for the paper too, and he knew that James would never let him. After all, Benjamin was just a lowly apprentice, so Ben became writing letters at night and signing them with the name of a fictional widow, uh, Silence Dogwood, filled with advice and a very critical world around her. This guy sounds interesting, doesn't he? After 14 letters, Ben confessed that he'd been writing the letters all along, and while James' friends thought Ben was quite you know, precocious and funny, James scolded his brother and was very jealous of the attention paid uh, to him. Before long, the Franklins found themselves at odds with the Boston's powerful Puritan preachers, the Mathers, or Mathers. Smallpox was a deadly disease in those times, and the Mathers supported inoculation, and the Franklins believed inoculations only made people sicker. Gee, we have the same arguments going on now. Most Bostonians agreed with the Franklins. They did not th like the way that James made fun of the clergy during the debate. Ultimately, James was thrown in jail for his views. Can you believe that? Put in jail for your views. And Benjamin was left to run the paper for several issues. Upon release from jail, James was not grateful to Ben for keeping the paper going. Instead, he kept harassing his younger brother and administering beatings from time to time. Ben couldn't take it and decided to run away in 1723. Running away was illegal. <laughs> In early American, the people all had a place in society and runaways did not fit in anywhere. Regardless, Ben took a boat to New York where he hoped to find work as a printer. He didn't, and he walked across New Jersey, finally arriving in Philadelphia via a boat ride. He, he used the last of his money to buy some rolls, and he was wet, messy, when his future wife, Deborah Reed, R-E-A-D, saw him on that day, October 6th of 1723, and she thought him an odd-looking, nevertheless dreamy type of guy, and they were married. Franklin found work as an apprentice printer, and he did so well that the governor of Pennsylvania promised to set him up in a business for himself. Skipping ahead, he'd been living with the Reed family before he left for London. Uh, Deborah Reed, the very same girl, uh, seeing young Benjamin arrive in Philadelphia started talking marriage with the young printer, but Ben did not think he was ready. And while he was gone, she married another woman. Oh, that was interesting. Can you believe that? While he was gone, she married somebody else. Um, well, that was part of the story. I guess I skipped ahead too far. Um, so upon returning to Philadelphia, Ben Franklin tried his hand to run a shop, but it soon went back to the printer's helper. Franklin was a better printer than the man he was working for, so he borrowed some money and set himself up in the printing business. Franklin seemed to work all the time, and the citizens of Philadelphia became to, to take notice of the young, diligent businessman. Soon he started to contract and do government jobs and was thriving in business. In 1728, he fathered a child named William. The mother of William is not known. However, in 1730, Benjamin married his childhood sweetheart, Deborah Reed. Deborah's husband had run off, and now she was able to marry. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Finishing the story. Um, he not only printed the paper, but he contributed pieces under Elias's, and his newspaper became the most successful in the colonies. Um, in 1733, he decided uh, he started publishing Poor Richard's Almanac, 
The almanacs were an area were printed annually and contained things like weather reports, recipes, and predictions. So that is interesting. Fire prevention. Franklin continued his civil contributions during the 1730s and 1740s. He launched projects to pave and clean Philadelphia's streets and environmental cleanup. He recognized that by pooling together resources, members could afford to buy books from England, and thus the nation's first library emerged. My goodness. Fires were a very dangerous threat to Philadelphians, so Franklin set about trying to remedy the situation. In 1736, he organized the Philadelphia's Union Fire Company, the first in the city. His famous saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. <laughs> that was actually a firefighting advice. Those who suffered fire damage to their homes often suffered irreversible economic loss. So Franklin helped found the contribution for insurance against loss by fire. Those insurance policies were not were not wiped out financially, and the con and the contribution contribution ship is still in business today. Electricity. <laughs> uh, Benjamin Franklin started setting up franchise printing partnerships in other cities. By 1749, he retired from business and started concentrating on science, experiments, and inventions. This was nothing new to Franklin. In 1743, he'd already invented the heat-efficient stove called the Franklin stove to help warm houses more efficiently. The stove was invented to help improve society. He refused to take out a, pat a patent. Other inventions are swim fins, um, bifocals. My gosh, uh, Franklin and his kite experiment, which everyone knows about now, he considered himself to be a loyal Englishman. Um, <laughs> at the heart of who he was. In 1765, Franklin was caught by surprise by America's overwhelming opposition to the Stamp Act. His testimony before the Parliament helped persuade the members to repeal the law. He started to wonder if America should break free of England. Franklin thought he had many friends in England who were growing sick of the corruption. Oh, he saw all around them in the politics and royal circles. Franklin, who opposed a plan, who proposed a plan for uniting the colonies in 1754, now would earnestly start working toward that goal. Um, his big break with England occurred in the Hutchinson affair with Thomas Hutchinson, an English appointed governor of Massachusetts. Although he pre pretended to take the side of the people um, in their complaints against England, he was actually still working for the king. Franklin got a hold of some letters in which Hutchinson called for an abridgment of what are called English liberties in America, and he sent the letters to letters to America where much of the population was outraged. Oh my gosh, we have uh, some real conspiracies going on. He naturally thought his son William, now the royal governor of New Jersey, would agree with his views, but William did not. William remained a loyal Englishman, and this caused a rift between the father and son that was never healed. Uh, Franklin was elected to the Second Continental Congress, worked on a committee of five that helped draft, draft the Declaration of Independence. In 1776, he signed the Declaration and afterwards sailed to France as an ambassador to the court of Louis XVI. The French loved Franklin. He was the man who tamed lightning, the humble American who dressed like a backwoodsman, but was no match for any wit in the world. He spoke French, though stutteringly. <laughs> He was a favorite of the ladies, and several years earlier, uh, his wife Deborah had died. And now Benjamin was a notorious flirt. Now a man in his late 70s, Franklin returned to America. He became the president of the Executive Council of Pennsylvania. He served as a delegate to the Constitutional Convention and signed the Constitution. One of his last public acts was writing an anti-slavery treaty treatise in 1789. He died on April 17, 1790, at the age of 84. 20,000 people attended the funeral of the man that was called the Harmonious Human Multitude. His electric personality still lights the world. So there you have it, Benjamin Franklin. And now we're going to ask to channel him in. I use the steampunk tarot deck as I am not a natural medium. However, I have found that the steampunk tarot deck is very good at channeling in those uh, from the other side. So we're going to ask Benja Benjamin Franklin to show up uh, today and see what he thinks about what's going on in America right now. Ooh, oh my goodness. Um, he's not very happy. He's not very proud of America right now. That's like ashamed. Um, so he's ashamed. 
He's ashamed of what's going on in America right now. Uh, too much is too much is focus around money. The Nine of Pentacles. Too much. There's too much focus on wealth and greed. In his opinion, remember these are just his opinions. Oh, I love the top hat in this. Um, we've got some choices to make. He's like, he's like, we have some choices to make. I can feel his energy. He's like, get to work, <laughs> get to work and, and start putting things back on the shelf. Start getting an order to things and, and dress, you know, he's showing up in a very formal, um, outfit, very formal. He's like, we have got work to do. And then he's, he's pointing out that the snakes and the dragons, and there's too much of a power battle here, too much of a power battle. Oh, and there's the battle. He's like, the, the, this is a, by the way, this is a verbal battle. What are you telling me? Oh, most of his, um, what he calls accomplishments were done written and verbally through communication. This is what he's telling me. Um, he's saying the written and verbal communication is where everything happens. We are a written and verbal society. And he said, so what you're going to accomplish is going to be your verbal battle, not an actual physical battle of which he is opposed. Um, he's, he, he said the people have to have great willpower and they have to know that the storm's coming, the storm clouds are coming. And this is a time to get your protection in place. You know, the umbrella protects you from the rain. He's like, we have to build in protections into the system. Um, he's very adamant about this. He's like, the chariot is where we've got to take the willpower, build in protection for when these storms come. He indicates the founding fathers thought they had built in protections for this. Um, and he's showing all these storm clouds. And he's also showing the duality here, the light versus the dark, how, how we are um, separated. He's recognizing that we are separated and that we need to have a healing. We need to come together. We need to work together. He, he's almost indicating the saying like um, both wings of the, both wings are belong to the same bird type of uh, quote. I feel like he's trying to um, amuse me with some modern quotes and I'm messing them up. Um, so the right wing and the left wing, wing both belong to the same bird and we've got to work together. Um, we've got to work together and step into completely new area into this country um, and work together. He's intrigued with um, the divination because he said that he was always into state-of-the-art everything. He didn't think like mainstream people. He would have been all over um, the, the tarot cards because you read the tarot cards. He's like, you read the tarot cards. He said, and just like people read my material, um, he said there can be success in that um, type of reading also. Um, he indicates that he's with his family on the other side and... You know, he's achieved uh, great things in that lifetime and his lineage or DNA ancestors are still um, having children that could grow up and be influential in um, the American political realm again. Um, he wants to shine a light that even though um, things could look really dark, he goes, be the shining light. He goes, be, don't be afraid to stand out and and not follow society norms. He said, I stood out. I was instrumental in showing what electricity is like. He said, if you think that we're done with inventions and discovering the laws on our planet, you are wrong. He said, oh, there is more to electricity than just electricity. He goes, take my theory and my work with electricity and take it to the next level. People are saying, well, this is just electricity. We're going to plug things into the wall. And he said, you don't see this plugged into the wall. You can do so much more with electrical energy and you just have to allow science. He's very passionate. You have to allow science to come through or you have to break it through. You've got to be the breakthrough. He's like, success comes to those who are willing to ride alone. He said, if you're willing to ride alone and people will stare at you and people will look at you and he keeps talking about electricity, electricity, electricity. He said, everything that is going to be the future 
technology in the world is based on electrical energy and harnessing it in an environment that is beyond containers. Oh God, I don't know what that means. He's, he's probably going to talk way beyond what I can translate to you. Um, he's, he's indicating that I'm still guiding people on your planet. There are people still calling out to me and still taking my advice. And even though uh, my earth life finished, there are people on in the government systems who are still in touch with me and still pondering some of my ideas, um, such as when the helium balloon has fire that heats up the balloon and it flies into the sky. They are pondering some of my, um, what is he calling it for technology? Physics, I guess I want to say the quantum physics. He's giving them quantum physics on ways to fly without fuel. Um, because at his core, he said, I've always been a scientist. I've always been a scientist. I'm going to peek through the veil and see how your, your country is doing with my colonial shoes on. He's showing colonial shoes. I still very much have my heart at the heart, um, of England and other countries that, you know, he said, I am a multicultural being and I am that way on the other side. So I'll always have my colonial shoes on. And we need to be a country that thinks of ideas that inspire the planet. He said the world, which is this guy is holding the world, the world looks at America for the state of the art ideas. We have to get back to being the country that shines the flame, that puts us up on a pedestal, that people admire our country because they come up with the state of the art ideas. We have to get back to that. And he said, we have to have a leader who is not afraid to stand up on a pedestal and come up with incredibly new ideas for energy because the lights are energy. Wow, he's exciting um, to talk to. He's like, my chair is empty. That's interesting. My chair is empty, but that doesn't mean my work is isn't done. I'm still, look at him. He's got the sword stabbing in the chair so that his work is empty, but he's still inventing. He's still an inventor on the other side and he still can impress these ideas to be used on this side of the planet. Um, I'm going to put these cards back and I'm going to say, I'm just going to ask him and th this um, channel is neutral on Trump or Bri Biden, but I want to know his personal or professional opinion. What is your professional opinion um, about um, Donald Trump as a leader? What's your professional opinion? Okay, you can't make this stuff up, you guys. You read the cards. I don't have to read this. This is the first card that came up that he's ashamed. Um, you, you, he's ashamed of Donald Trump. What is your professional opinion of um, Joe Biden as a leader? What's your professional opinion as Joe Biden as a leader? It's the woman. <laughs> well, he's being honest. He said it's the woman and it's the young woman because a page is a young woman. He's talking about my interest is in the young woman. This is where things are going to happen. She's going to open up. She's going to open up to new ideas and be inspirational. It's the woman. It's the young woman that he is impressed with. Well, that's our reading for today. I want to thank Benjamin Franklin for showing up. You know, I just wish that you could have reincarnated and come back because I would really love to sit down and have some more discussions with you. You were brilliant and you didn't have the best um, childhood, but I, I find it interesting that you were born on the 17th and you died on the 17th. It almost is, is how can you do that? How can you die on the same exact day? And then you were born in the 1700s. So we have a 17 and a 17. Um, one seven, one plus seven is an eight. And that is a powerful person. So he was powerful when he was born and he was powerful when he died. So we're th thankful for you for coming through and we're thankful for your contribution that you've done um, for America. So thank you, Benjamin Franklin. And I hope you all enjoyed this channeling.